华民族炎黄子孙，绝不向倭寇海盗低头。小兵，小钱没有，小兵这一脚，来了，小兵，小兵。小大侠，是参谋出手救了我。敌倭寇，共襄一举，万民所。Everybody, it's Sid from Cool Movie Gram, your source for everything about cool film. Uh, just be sure to hit, smash that subscribe button, the like button, uh, check me out on Instagram, check my other content out, and also the usual stuff. Let me know your thoughts. Right, well, yes,、um, I'm just really pleased and looking great to see that、um, my channel's kind of gaining more,、uh, more traction, and also my videos are kind of going up, my views are going up, and I have all of you who have been viewing my stuff. Thank you very much. It's、uh, it's been a pleasure. Now we're almost at the 500 mark, and as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, that there is a giveaway as soon as I hit the 500 mark. All you have to do is like and comment on that video, which is of the moment of romance、uh, review that was done for the Radiance uh, films uh, Blu-ray. So、um, a few details about that giveaway are in that video. And today, well, what is、uh, it's another review, it's a review of、um, well, says Beach of the War Gods, which is.、Um, The、Jimmy Wong Yu film. It's one of his first films that he did with the studio, and、um, it was released in 1973. He's the star. He's the director, and、um, yes, it's a Hong Kong Taiwanese production because、uh, because of his、um, yeah. We'll go into the details. Anyways,、um, yeah, might as well just crack on into this. Starts off with a small town, which is kind of、uh, being、uh, well, being invaded and attacked and bullied by、um, by Japanese forces, which is towards the end of the Ming Dynasty. A wandering swordsman, played by the、uh, the late legend Jimmy Wang Yu, and the director, of course, <laughs> he.、Um, You know, just takes an instant disliking to them and decides that he will help the townsfolk. Which, coincidentally, it's purely men in this film, and、uh, which we'll touch up on uh, shortly. Uh, who decide to、um, rally together? He kind of finds、uh, swordsmen and warriors from across the nation and people that he knows himself in order to crush the invading Japanese enemies. What can I say about this 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 this, this movie?、It's, I mean, the story itself is pretty much very linear. It's a very simple, small scale story, and it kind of it harks back a lot to the Kurosawa samurai films, notably Seven Samurai. And his character it kind of gives a strong Yojimbo vibe. I mean, a lot of it was touched up on、um, a Hong Kong Cinema Appreciation Society's video as well,、uh, which kind of explained the whole.、Um, Kind of influence that Jimmy Wang Yu has actually had from Japanese cinema. I mean, the scale of this film is a lot bigger than what he had done、uh, previously. Like, for example, his,、um, his directorial debut, which is also his final movie with、uh, Shaw Brothers, which was、um, the Chinese boxer. He's got a lot of familiar faces in this film. We're featured in other movies like、uh, Ye Tian, who appeared in、um, in Blood of the Dragon, and There is another small like look at these、uh, Chinese Taiwanese actors and、uh, Han Xi Han Xi I can't how to pronounce it I can't pronounce his name、uh, from A Touch of Zen he was also in this movie and、um, this was kind of like it doesn't have that kind of philosophical depth that you would normally find in a Kurosawa movie 
Uh, this was pretty much just full on, like just kind of gung ho. And even this film, film was marketed as the most manliest film ever made. It's like just a masculine film, full of so many, you know, it's just the whole cast was men. <laughs> it's like these towns were populated with just nothing but men. <laughs> That's what it seemed like. And, um, you know, it had a lot of extras. And, um, yeah, and this, this was kind of like, you know, it felt more than just like your normal exploitation type of cinema. I mean, yeah, and I can also see that, for example, a lot of um, Jimmy Wanju's character, especially the um, the Wandering Swordsman, he's very much like Yojimbo, but I kind of felt a very strong influence in this film from, um, from Sergio Leone's works. I mean, although his character is pretty much modeled on uh, Yojimbo, on Yojimbo uh, but... Um, he reminds me a lot of, um, he gave that strong vibe of, um, from Sergio Leone's Once Upon a Time in the West, um, the character Harmonica, which was played by um, uh, Charles Bronson. And he kind of gave that kind of like brooding, you know, just devil may care, you know, attitude. But the fact is he just, you know, he tends to have an instant disliking for bad guys. And um, oh, the set pieces are incredible in this film. They are full of um, just lots of like, just lots of like more or less props. Just the colors are, are very vibrant. That's the cinematography captures everything. The sets are looking great. And um, you know, just the fights are just absolutely chaotic. You know, just full on like just badassery. Just, you know, the use of like gunpowder explosions. And also, you know, these creative weapons from these movies. And um, yeah, I thought um, it was just you know, a really kind of, this is a brilliant spectacle as well. I mean, it borrows a lot from, uh, as, uh, as, per, as mentioned from, like, for example, samurai movies and um, swordsman, unusual swordsman genre, like a lot of the tropes, but this film is a lot of fun. It's just like incredible, kind of visceral, you know, violent, just, you know, bloody badassery. And I, I can say, I would say, I'd definitely give this movie a four and a half out of five. You know, this is just probably one of my favorite Jimmy Wong Wu films. The Blu-ray itself. Oof, wow. Eureka did a great job releasing, I mean, Tony Stella's artwork. I mean, just look at that. It's just, come on, man. It's like, how can you not be intrigued? From like seeing something like this it's just uh you know, just look at that artwork i mean it comes with of course it's got a, it's a double-sided one um, on the inside and yeah so that's the packaging uh you know it comes with uh this kind of like i think this must have been like the the vhs uh cover for this film yeah so it's not the original like chinese or uh hong kong or taiwanese uh, poster, but this is just the, um, you know, that's what that's what we pretty much get from here. But the disc art is pretty much just blah, just plain, simple, like a lot of Eureka releases. And now let's just go into the um, special features, which, okay, apart from the artwork, you've got a 1080p presentation on Blu-ray of the original Hong Kong theatrical cut from a brand new 2K restoration, um, which looks, on a 4K TV, it looks absolutely incredible. I've never seen the film look this good. It was just absolutely pristine quality. Um, I mean, clearly, I mean, it doesn't look as brand new as something new, but for something that was released 50 years ago, from, from the recent Blu-ray, so almost 51, but the fact that this film, it's kind of, um, you know, it's just full of like, it's just, the visuals just come to life. I mean, I've never seen the film look this good because previously, when I did see this movie, it was dubbed in English and it was a really grainy kind of like, washed out print and um you know i've never seen, sort of thought i'd see this film i mean everyone always kind of made this categorize this film as like a grindhouse type of film but you know like like pretty much his uh, his first movie the one on um sorry chinese boxer and even his previous uh movies like uh, one on boxer and his later works like um, master of the flying Big guillotine and blow the dragon but um this was pretty much the make it look out that was all like 
Grindhouse. But the fact is, this restoration that U Eureka had actually kind of like sourced and um, they used for this release, it just looks amazing. It looks like a great quality piece of action cinema. And like, you know, martial arts cinema is just brilliant, you know, brilliantly captured. The pictures, the colors, and the vividness of the, of the actual image, top notch. You know, you got the original Mandarin, uh, Mandarin mono audio, audio and also the classic English dub and subtitles, of course, newly translated for this release. Uh, there's a brand new feature length audio commentary with Asian film expert Frank Zheng, uh, who, you know, he always does stellar work, whether it's Eureka or, um, or 88 or even Arrow, whoever he actually works with, his his commentaries are, are, and even on Radiance, it's just it's full of so much great kind of, um, it's great kind of like um, Easter egg information, like great little kind of fun facts. So, oh, you know, this happened, that happened, that's why they were doing this and such. And um, it just gives a lot of great information about this, um, about this film. And again, top notch, really informative. Uh, beached, which probably for me, this is the best feature on bonus feature on this actual disc. It is uh, Mike and Arnie, uh, Mike Leader and Arnie Venema, talk Jimmy Wang Yu. And um, yeah, I remember speaking to uh, Mike about this. Uh, so, uh, when, I, when, I put, so when I put it on my, um, put, put, put it still on my story on Instagram, he goes, Oh, he's more dressed appropriately for the beach. And I was like, Hey, well, uh, you know, people can wear what they want. So you and Arnie are both pretty much ready for the beach uh, it's just them sitting down on like you know beach chairs and um kind of just talking about jimmy Wang Yu and like pretty much um how what he was like as a personality his, you know how charismatic he was and his kind how his kind of career transitioned that like, for example from starting off in shaw brothers and um kind of then eventually kind of moving on to golden harvest and going independent when he moved to Taiwan after leaving Shores and um, there onwards, and also his, you know, kind of like his you know, aforementioned supposed link to the triads and also um, kind of his involvement in the triad life at, uh, during that time. And um, yeah, it's just, it was really fun. It was just kind of like just, you know, some a conversation that you could have with probably someone who loves movies just as much as you, and you can kind of just kind of bounce up on another and just have that kind of like just create an interesting kind of um, talking point, and it was pretty good. And you got an archival interview with Jimmy Wang Yu, the late star who passed away like well, almost two years ago, um, from um, 2001, which is called cour courtesy of the uh, Frederick Ambrosine. Uh, video archive and that was an interesting interview and it's just kind of like how he kind of like saw like for example things about his career is going going over like how he would change like certain scenes how for example you know death scenes in some of his previous films or films from that, that era re-watching them he would kind of like he looked back and he said that you know I'm kind of embarrassed it just doesn't look that good now like for an audience today and I'm thinking yeah you know he's got a point and um, you know, just about how his kind of career has kind of um, transitioned from like different phases. Got a great new uh, booklet from uh, with the film, which is a limited edition one, of course, in the uh, slipcase edition. Uh, comes with a new writing by James Oliver, an obituary for Jimmy Wang Yu, written by um, renowned Asian films uh, critic Tony Raines, and an archival review of the film by Dr. Craig Reed from his book, The Ultimate Guide to Martial Arts Movies of the 1970s, which um, makes for great reading. And uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it was, it's, it's really, it's, it was actually pretty cool. You know, it's just really kind of like a great kind of, um, kind of look into the movie and the reviews and whatnot. And uh, what can I say about this film? Uh, Wow, you know, it's just you know, you know, the people involved and like in terms of like the packaging from everything from the restoration of the film and the bonus features that went into this movie, movie's release. I mean, Eureka kind of like really pushed the bar. I mean, for me, uh, I mean, of course, three kind of like releases. I haven't got one of them this year, which is the uh, Bruce Lee and Golden Harvest sets because 
commitments, of course. Uh, I wasn't able to um, you know, put money, any money towards that 4K release uh, or even the Blu-ray box set, which is completely out of print now as well. Uh, but um, yeah, and um, I mean, a lot of people are saying how that was one of the greats. I would say 88 films for me, their best release of uh, 2023 was definitely Long Arm of the Law. And for Eureka, I mean, this, Beach of the War Gods, which uh, I would say their release, their packaging, the presentation of the film, the bonus features, and like everything, the contents that were involved in this, this is, in this is just a must have. I would say definitely a solid five out of five for the Blu-ray and the presentation of the film. Yeah, that was my, um, that was my, uh, my review of the, um, of this amazing release and I hope you enjoyed it and um, let me know in the comment section if you've seen this film what is your opinion on this movie and also what are your top five Jimmy Wang Yu movies I mean, it could be anything it doesn't have to be just his Shaw Brothers or his Taiwanese movies or his Golden Harvest titles or whatnot these this can be any one of his like for example overall uh, his filmography he's been in quite a fair few films and some seen some unheard of and some unreleased in the West, but just let me know what you think. Um, you know, do you like, you know, what, what, which of his films do you, do you like? I mean, do you like Golden Swallow? Do you like, you like uh, sorry, the One-Armed Swordsman and its sequel? I mean, yeah, just let me know. And um, yeah, I'll hopefully see you on the next one. And again, don't forget, if you, if you haven't, subscribe. Check out my videos and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Peace out.